this isn't the standard video I usually do. I'm having problems with my old Ingersoll. Um, she's been a bloody workhorse between sandblasting, spraying, everything else that I've hit it with. Uh, I brought this thing back in 2000. And she's decided that she won't get up to pressure anymore. She goes up to about 80 PSI on the gauge here and that's it, which is not really good enough for sandblasting anymore. Um, I'm starting to struggle with spraying. So today I'm going to attempt to change the finger valves in here. Um, done a little bit of research. I think this little plate here in the center between the cylinder and the head. Um, that little plate there has got some little finger valves on them and they, when they get carbon built up or go astray is where you can't or it will stop building pressure. So I got onto eBay and I've ordered a little kit from the US, 144 bucks. I've got my new little finger valves here, the plates. I ordered a new filter, I might as well do the full overhaul because I don't think I've ever changed the filter on this which is pretty embarrassing seeing as though it's 21 years old. Um, but yeah, it's um, stopping me from spraying anything for the build, but they're all covered up at the moment. Um, so I'm going to see how I go with this. I'll do a little video just in case anybody else is having trouble with their compressor building over around the 80 psi mark i'll uh, fire this thing up and you can actually hear the hissing coming from the actual filter so from where she's meant to be sucking in it's blowing back out I'm sorry about the uh, noise but here we go so as you can see she gets to about 70 psi and that's it and you can hear the hissing coming back out of where it should be sucking air in. So let's get this pulled apart. I'll rip this um, valve cover off and we'll see what's inside there. I'll give that a little bit of a clean out. A little bit of crap down on the top of the pistons there the gasket still looks pretty good so this is our plate there's obviously the back side of those there's the top little ring and the fingers will be on the top of that so I'll get this pulled apart and we'll see what we're dealing with does look a little bit tired. A bit of moisture's got up in there. Um, I'll pull these fingers out now and then I'll give this a, a good clean up. I'll give the valve cover a good clean up and we'll get her uh, back together. Right, so one thing I've noticed with the aftermarket kit, they give you these new bolts and nuts, but they're a lot different in size to the OEMs. And the OEMs seem to actually screw down through the valve plate. It locks this back ring and holder on, and then there's a lock nut on the other side, so I'll I'll clean these babies up and reuse these. Um, I'll disregard their nuts and bolts. So I'll give this a bit of a wet sand just to get it uh, nice for the gasket again. I'll try a bit of uh, 
a little bit of 600 and then a bit of 1200 and I think I'll instead of using water use a little bit of acetone it should give it a, a better chance of uh, cleaning off All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll uh, refit the new finger valves and then we'll clean up the valve cover. Okay, so that is the valves all done now we'll just clean up the valve cover gaskets back on put it back together all right so next step is to get the old gasket off the compressor um, and i'll give this a bit of a clean out as well while i'm there So she's all cleaned out, top's looking all fresh, I've given the bolts a bit of a steel brush. There we have it. I don't have a, a torque setting for these so I'll have to google that but sort of done it up um, hand torque. So. I'll see what happens when we try to run her. Um, if everything's good, I shall Google a torque setting for the top and get that properly torqued up. So next we have this disgusting filter. Pretty embarrassed about that. So... I fired her back up and I found that this little valve here um, must be a secondary, like a spare pressure switch that comes off this little capillary line here off the non-return valve, comes up into under here. She wasn't closing off properly as well, which was letting a little bit of air out and it's, it was still, it was building up to about 110, but it still wasn't getting there completely. So. These things are only about $60 or so. Um, I just went and brought a new pressure switch, which I'll fit it in now. I've used just um, gas Teflon. I'm hoping that'll hold. So this is the moment of truth. We're gonna fire her up and hopefully we get to the 120 and she shuts off. Fingers crossed. Let's give it a go. Sensational. Much quieter than before. Um, seems to be building a little bit quicker, which is nice, probably because of those finger valves. I can't hear any air leaking anywhere. I think we have job done. So from someone who's never done it before, it's pretty easy, guys. Do a um, bit of a service call on your compressor if she's not building pressure quickly or she just can't get above or up to the 120 or whatever your cutoff is i'll give this thing a good clean off now that it's out from under the shelves um, i'll do an oil change i'm sure i've got a lot more blasting and spraying to go thanks for watching guys